What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. I'm John the Video Guy and in this tutorial or actually just video I'm going to be going over the top 10 After Effects effects to use for your projects. These are either effects that I've found out about that I've used over the years that I found really helpful when designing and doing different things inside After Effects. I have a pretty decent list here for you guys today and some of them you might have not heard of. So be sure to stick to the very end or skip around in the video. I'll have time codes below on the effects that you wanna learn about and check out. So with that, let's get started. But before we do, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps my channel out. And with that, let's get started with effect Number 10. So the first effect I'm going to mention is called Fractal Noise. And if you've used After Effects a lot, you'll notice that this effect gets used a lot to create a lot of different types of things. It's located under Noise and Grain Fractal Noise. And when you apply this effect by changing all these settings, you can create some really cool looks, different textures, especially when it comes to fog, smoke, fire, and a lot of different elements. This can be used for so much. I've created a few tutorials on how to use this that utilize this effect. One of which is the smoke effect. If you want to learn how to make realistic smoke, I'll link that video tutorial right up here. Feel free to go check that out. And this effect is really helpful for creating different fog, smoke, and different, you know, textures and ambient things and, you know, things inside After Effects. So it's really diverse and I see it used almost in every tutorial I watch. It's used a lot and it's really beneficial. All right, so the next effect is called corner pin. And what corner pin is good for is to actually put one layer into another layer in a different type of perspection or perspective. So I'll give you an example here. Say if I wanted this uh, photo of flowers inside this image, but I want it on the wall. And this wall is not on a 2D surface. It's kind of three dimensional. And, you know, it's weird because this side's uh, taller than this side. So maybe if I want it there, how do I do that? And corner pin's a good way to do that. So if you select this layer, and we'll pre-compose it first by right-clicking, going to pre-compose, make sure you move all attributes, and it'll pre-compose it. If you go to effect, corner pin's located under distort, corner pin. And what you can do is, and what it does is it adds these pins to the edge of the layer. And you can click and drag these corner pins as you know since it's that's the name of the effect to where you want to pin it on the inside the composition so you can really you know adjust the perspective of this layer and really warp it to put it in place on where it needs to be so now as you can see we just put that flower right on that wall and it didn't take that much time it was very simple and it accurately displays it in a new perspective field and you know what corner pins really nice is you didn't have to convert it to a 3d layer so it's really quick and easy to use to just do something very simply and not have to build a camera or mess with 3d controls inside after effects so if you're looking to do that this is a nice way to accomplish it by using corner pen all right, so the next effect I'm going to cover, number eight, is called Turbulent Displace. And what Turbulent Displace is good for is to add slight animation to still objects that I've found. I've worked a lot with clients, and they send over maybe pre-made graphics or something, maybe from a PowerPoint deck, and we have to animate it a little bit. And Turbulent Displacement is a really good way to kind of subtly move different textures and different things to kind of give it some movement. So in this example here, I just have... Uh, this still photo of a swirly thing, but when we add turbulent displace, we can actually animate it and um, add some nice little warping to a texture. So if you go to distort turbulent displace, what you can do is just keyframe the evolution and just change the evolution over time, and you can see it'll add some nice uh, different looking um, animation throughout the texture. So it's a nice way to still, you know, keep the original texture, but add some just subtle, subtle turbulent, you know, displaced to it. So definitely check it out. It has helped me, especially working with client projects or different textures that they send us that are static to kind of give it a little bit of movement too. 
All right, so the next one I just actually discovered a few weeks ago, and I honestly think this is a new effect, but what it's called, if you go down to simulation, is CC Snowfall. And this is crazy because I don't think this was around a while ago. And what this does is it actually makes snowflakes inside After Effects. And if we zoom in here, you can see snowflakes. And if we go forward in time, they fall. So this is a really cool way if you are looking to add snow or different textures that kind of fall to an After Effects composition. I'm not sure if this is relatively new, but I just stumbled across it. I mean, there's so many different effects in After Effects, I probably didn't see it before, but this is a cool effect if you wanted to add snow inside After Effects. And it's pretty simple. It does a lot of the work for you. And the next effect I'll cover is called Shatter. And by far, Shatter is probably still one of the best ways to break apart a layer or a different thing and you know there's a lot of different ways you can use shatter you can use the standard brick uh, shape or you can change it to something such as like glass which is a nice way to break apart something we toggle that you can see it shatters and there's a lot of different controls to play with but still to this day i still use shatter to break apart something inside after effects it's definitely a pretty pretty cool effect you can do a lot with it it is a little render intensive, that's the only thing. So, but keep keep in mind that this is a nice way to break apart something, you just need something to shatter pretty quickly. So for this next effect, I'm gonna change the solid color to white, and the next thing I'm gonna search for, which is pretty cool, if you go down to Stylize CC Vignette, and you know, this is a very simple effect, but the reason I wanted to bring this up is because before in After Effects, what you'd have to do is make a new solid, make a mask, feather the edges, expand it, and adjust it accordingly. And this effect simply takes out two to three uh, different steps and saves you a lot of time. So definitely want, worth mentioning in this list of the top 10 effects that I use. CC Vignette, definitely a time-saving effect inside After Effects. All right, so the next one is called Numbers. So if you go to Effect, Text, Numbers. And what this is cool is it basically creates numbers for you based on a solid or a layer. So, you know, this is very helpful. You can do a lot of things with this, one of which is create down uh, t countdown timer clocks. And I'll link a tutorial on how to create that from scratch right up here. Feel free to go check that out. But basically you can change the settings in here, do a time code and you know have it count down or up depending on uh, different time or sequence uh, settings or composition settings. So really cool effect, feel free to check it out and uh, mess with this effect. So the next effect I'm gonna cover is called hue and saturation. And this is the first color effect that I'm co covering. It's probably one of the oldest inside After Effects, but it's still a very powerful. And what this allows you to do is just completely change the color of a layer. And this is really nice if you find a nice motion graphic background or a different texture background and you just want to colorize it in a different color. This effect is really powerful and, you know, I've used this a lot in client projects where they have a certain color, you know, and I just want to change something I already did to another color. It's really helpful in simply doing that. So definitely check it out, hue and saturation. All right, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a top 10 After Effects list without some type of key effect, and I have to cover the best green screen keying effect is called Key Light. By far, this is the best. Right there, boom, it's almost done. Just refine it a little bit and you're good to go. Key Light is a really powerful keying application inside After Effects. If you are in DaVinci Resolve or another platform, DaVinci Resolve actually just came out with another cool key effect. I'll link a video if you want to experiment with their key right up here, feel free to check it out. But if you're doing a lot of visual effects work inside After Effects, this is definitely the best key that I've found and worked with inside After Effects. And drum roll please, the number one effect inside Adobe After Effects that I use all the time is color correction curves. I have to pay homage to Andrew Kramer as he uses curves almost in pretty much every tutorial he makes. By far, this is probably the best <laughs> After Effects effect to use really on anything 
because you can really control the luminance on the highs, lows, and really fine tune the style of a different of a layer. So you know, I use this a lot, especially at work um, when I'm trying to match different uh, luminances of like backgrounds or different graphics and stuff. So you know, definitely curves. You can easily just crank the you know crank the highs, darken the lows. Then not only that, but you have control over the different uh, red, green, and blues. So, you know, you can really enhance the color by just using this simple effect. So it's an old effect that's been around since probably the beginning, but in my book, it's still one of my favorites and definitely on this list of top 10. Do you have a favorite effect? I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment down below. So there you go, guys. That is my top 10 After Effects effects to use inside Adobe After Effects. Wow, that is a tongue twister. But if you want to learn more about After Effects, I actually put together a playlist. Feel free to go check it out. I'll link it right up here. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.